Thank you everyone for joining in. My name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Um, Consolidon is new age in that unlike in traditional consulting firms, we did not hire a lot of consultants. What we did instead when we were setting up in 2017, what we did instead is we partnered with a lot of boutique consulting firms from across the globe. So we've partnered with more than 300 boutique consulting firms and these boutique consulting firms deliver the projects in Consolidon. Now, what that allowed us to do is uh, within two years of setting up, we already had about 500 consultants. We'd already delivered about 200 consulting projects across the GCC region. Um, we now in 2021 have more than 5,000 uh, consultants who can come in, in on projects. Uh, so our platform model allowed us to scale quite quickly. Um, in 20, uh, 2020, of course, was supposed to be a great year for everyone. It was supposed to be a great year for us after the initial acceleration that we had in uh, 2018 and 2019. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't turn out like that for anyone, uh, for most people at least. Um, so uh, after the initial shock in March and April, we decided that we're going to spend uh, at least 20% of the time at Consolidon. So all the, uh, the my colleagues at Consolidon and me spend 20% of our time on initiatives which help things get back on track, right? So for example, last year we started a project uh, where we got 700 business leaders from across the GCC to help small businesses and micro businesses because they were the ones who were most affected right at the start. This year, what we decided to do was 70 of our boutique consulting firms to, together with us have organized this web summit. So this is actually, this today's session is a part of a seven day web summit called Connected Insights. And our aim from Connected Insights is to bring in subject matter experts like Ahmed Galal, uh, who have had, I've had the pleasure of knowing for over almost a year now. Um, and we bring in, uh, bring in experts like him to talk to also larger organizations about what they need to do to get things back on track. Today's topic is um, implementation of enterprise risk management. Um, before I pass on to Ahmed, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. One is instead of inviting all of you as attendees, we've you'll see on Zoom that we've invited you as panelists. And the reason for that is because we want to uh, interact with you in this session. We don't want to make this a one-way communication, right? And how we'll do that is after every slide or so, Emma will pause briefly for questions. If you have any questions or even any comments, feel free to uh, jump in. You can uh, use the chat feature. You can raise your hands, uh, uh, raise your, you know, you can raise your, a virtual hand on Zoom using their feature or your actual hands if you're on video. And we'd love to interact with you during this session. Uh, one quick thing um, is during this session, there will be a few giveaways. So look out in the chat for these giveaways. So for example, you know, we're inviting speakers for the next edition of Connected Insights. This is the first edition. For the second edition of Connected Insights, we'd like to invite speakers. So there's a short form that you need to complete for that if you're interested. Uh, we also have four workshops remaining uh, in, this, uh, in this summit. Uh, these are paid workshops, about $299 per workshop. There's one very interesting one this evening on decision-making. Um, we're inviting three people from today's audience to participate in those workshops for, for free by completing a quick short form. So look out for those giveaways in the chat, right? Uh, thank you. That's all from me. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for uh, you know spending time with us today. And I'm handing over to Ahmed. I'm really looking forward to this session, Ahmed. Thank you so much, Varun. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ahmed Gilal. I'm an enterprise risk management professional. And I'd like to thank you first for your time to come today for the webinar. And also, I'd like to thank Varun and his team from Consolidon. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about an effective enterprise risk management implementation. And I design, design my presentation. So it goes from the lowest level of enterprise risk management to the highest level. 
as an introduction, enterprise risk management is in everything that we do in our life. It starts from looking down our doors, arranging for our uh, planning yeah, retirement. So we are interested in the bridge design, yeah? So we'll be interested, yeah? Uh, and also risk management is an intimate part of everyone's life. We can tell you how to identify, mitigate, and even acquire risk in our life without understanding that this is actually is called risk management. Risk management is in our day-to-day -day activities. Before moving to the next slide, I have a question to the attendees and I'd like this session to be more of an interactive. So for the attendees, what do you think if a risk management from a business perspective is? I'd like to hear answer from you guys, please. Hello, Mr. Ahmed. Hello. And good morning to you. Good morning, so, Marwan. First of all, uh, my name is Marwan. I work for Emirates Flight Catering. And for me, effective implementation would be safety management system, for example, based on ISO 45001. Okay, but what do you think, like, what risk management for a business is? What is definition of risk management? How to manage the hazards within the company? Uh, yeah, this how is to prevent very good them, point. How to avoid them? Very, very good point. Any other participants? Yeah, I would like to define risk management as a way for a business to survive. You won't survive any okay. market if you don't have an efficient risk management in your company. Okay, very good point. I'll tell you guys like a professional definition for an enterprise risk management. It is an integral part of the organizational business that enables difficult decisions to be made in a structured and managed way to achieve two important objectives. Maximize the opportunities for success and minimize the threats within an organization. Okay. Taking risk is like exercising, no pain, no gain. The accomplishment is really possible without taking a risk. Organization of all types and size face internal and external factors that creates uncertainty on their objectives. These uncertainties are is called risk. Sometimes those who practice risk management and other professional in some way forget that in order for the business to grow, they must take risk. But it's not any kind of risk that can be taken. It needs to be a managed risk. A managed risk is a must for any organization to survive and thrive. So whatever the risk is being taken, as long as it can be managed by an organization, then it's okay to take such risk. But I think you might be wondering right now, what is managed risk? Can somebody tell me what could be a managed risk is? Hello, guys. Perhaps, you know, if you're getting insurance, you want to take risk, but you've transferred the risk. So it's sort of managed. Okay. This is an answer. Somebody else can provide me an answer. What a managed risk is? Uh, a managed risk, we define it in Germany like that. Uh, a risk with a probability, cost, and some procedures to handle. It's very much uh, close to the right answer. Managed Managed risk is that we should be knowing the facts and the threats around an opportunity and whether we can cope with the available resources in order to overcome such a threat within an organization and how can we deal with it. Um, I know you guys might be thinking right now that what I'm saying is like too bookish, like we have resources, we have opportunities and threat. But the fact in any situation, when we try to take a business decision, we don't have all the available information with us. So what we can do is that we see the available resources within an organization from people, skill set, resources, infrastructure. And then we see the opportunities available and the maximum threat that could happen from these opportunities. And we'll see whether our resources will be able to match such a, a threat facing the organization or not. In a very nutshell, we can say that while an organization may die a quick death if it didn't manage its critical risk, for sure it will die a slow death if it didn't take enough risk. This means that for any organization to survive in a business, 
they must manage the level of the risk they are taking. It shouldn't be too high, so it put it in a vulnerable situation, and it shouldn't be too low, so it can take it take the organization out of the business. Okay, so before we move to the next slide, I have a question, but I gave the answer in the previous slide. Risk management is a fold of two very important objectives. Can somebody tell me what these objectives are? I just mentioned them in the previous slide. Hello, guys, gentlemen. Can you answer? introduce the question? Okay, risk management is a fold of two important aspects. I mentioned these two aspects in the previous slide. In this slide, can you tell me what are these two objectives or folds? Improve the chances for success and minimize steps. Very good, Dina. Good answer, Dina. Okay. Dina was right in her answer. So when we talk about managed risk, we mean like opportunities and threat. In reality, risk management means the ability to reduce the impact of a threat, also reduce the impact of losing an opportunity, or in other words, how to convert a threat into an opportunity. The primary consideration for an organization to reduce an, a threat is the ability of the organization to identify, measure, and mitigate the threat. Let me give you a very interesting life example of how to convert a threat into an organization. And this is, you can say, this is from a real estate perspective. Uh, a six-story tower building was next to a busy road for over than 50 years. And management decided that it's time to take this building down. However, there was a fear among the management because of the interruption it might cause, problem it might cause to the neighborhood, roads, and businesses. So the risk management team suggested in order to minimize the effect of demolishing the building, they need to make this event as a public event. So they created a free lottery ticket for the people to come and give them the right to press the button for demolishing the building. The event became very spectacular when the winner of the ticket was a child in a chair. So risk management team ensured that all the safety measures are in place. A health, safety, and environment team ensured that all the hazards are removed, public were gathered, and the child pressed the button. And everyone watched the building demoloted, imploded. Then the public went back home, cleared the dust out of their cars, homes, and the company that owned the building waited for criticism, negative press, or whatever we will have as a complaint. And they discovered that there was nothing of this that came to them. In fact, a group of young people and old people applied to work for the company. And this is a smart thinking, thinking outside the box in order to convert a threat into a opportunity. For, for the risk to be considered a risk, it, it has to be linked to an objective within the organization. Risks do not exist in silence. It needs to be defined and mapped to the objectives. A key risk is the risk that can affect a key objective within an organization. Risk and uncertainty, and uncertainties that do not affect organizational objectives are not considered risk for the organization. So risk management is concerned about reducing the uncertainties for achieving corporate objectives. Now I have a question for you guys and I need you to think about it. What do you think is the benefit of a risk enterprise risk management to an organization? What an enterprise risk management will do to an organization? I need somebody, I need, I need you guys to participate in this and give me an answer. Hi, Ahmed. Uh, this is Hi. Islam. Um, Hi, Islam. So, so the way I would see it is uh, the, the role would uh, would be to look at it, uh, to look at all of the risks holistically 
um, okay. uh, you know, kind of get a bird's eye view to see what are some of the, you know, uh, pockets of risks that are uh, that are embedded within, you know, the the day to day operations of the business, um, and also to take into account what are the, you know, the business plans in the future, um, you know, what are the aspirations of the business to achieve, and accordingly identify and you know quantify um, all of these risks. Okay. Thank you so much for your answer, Islam. Anyone would like to add an answer? What does risk management to an organization? Does it like reduce the flow of the business, enhance the flow? What does it do? Uh, hi, I'm Ahmed. Uh, this is Pandian here. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, hi. Uh, from my view, I feel uh, risk is something which is a kind of uncertainty which might impact the objective for the organization. Very smart. It's uh, going to be both from a short term and the long term objective, which organization okay. has to achieve. So Very it's good. more of a structured process, which has to be the kind of embedded in the organization. Very good. Somebody else would like to add? I think I'm at the, uh, I can think of two, two things here. Uh, one is the cost saving, right? And Very the good. other is, and the other is the prudent decision making. Okay. Very good. Let me give you the answer for this. There are three main pillars for risk management benefits to an organization. The first, it improved profitability. This is through increased likelihood of achieving corporate objective, aligning risk appetite with the business strategy, better cost and pricing for product and service with an organization, reducing operational loss and regulatory fines. This is from the improving profitability perspective. Then the second pillar is improved business efficiency. And this will be when the organization linked the risk to the objectives, there will be increased business objectives, better resource allocation, better assurance for compliance, reduced operational interruptions, and finally improve the ability to respond to outside opportunities. And the last pillar for improvement is improved competitive advantage which will be in the form of protection to reputation and brand, faster response to external changes, improved stakeholder and uh, uh, trust, and more likely to retain and recruit talent. And just very a quick note, gentlemen, whatever type of the risk management uh, that an organization is planning, if they put the right plans, whatever risk they will face, they will be able to mitigate even it was not among their plans. Okay, now we spoke about what are the benefits of a risk to an organization. Can somebody tell me what types of risk an organization can face? Major types of risk. Yes, Ahmed, uh, if I may kind of refer to the COSO framework, I can talk about strategic, operational, financial, and the reporting kind of a risk. Okay, I like the first three. Somebody else would like to add? Mr. Simon. Yeah, hi, hi, Matt. hi everyone. Hi. Um, yeah, I think the, the two big groups for me are always, you know, financial and non-financial uh, risks, you know, and then you can break it down further. Um, Strategic, for sure, one of them, and you know, a bunch of operational risks as well, where you have infinite number, actually. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. In the chat, uh, Aline is saying reputational. Sri is saying, uh, Sri Kumar uh, saying market risk. Uh, yes. Okay. Legal risk. And I think Miko is raising his hand as well. So, Miko. Miko, please go ahead. I am thinking about liability risks here, because in, very good one. Yes, um, because I, I'm thinking about mobile industry, and they they have this challenge. Um, so they are avoiding uh, regulations, and where where does this uh, so to say the limit goes where you can really uh, manage risks if you are avoiding regulation. And then there is this liability on the other side. So, Very good. This is what's called correlated risk. Because Correl when risk happened from the regulation perspective, it impacted the other risk, which is the liquidity. This is pretty smart, Miko. 
Okay, I'll give you the answer for this. We have five main risks to, an, uh, to any business, strategic, business, financial, operational, and compliance. The strategic risk, it is concerned with uh, that the corporate business strategy might not be effectively implemented. This could be like ineffective merger and acquisition, ineffective innovative uh, product, ineffective growth strategy. Business risk is the risk that the annual financial and operational results are, will not meet the stakeholder expectations. Financial risk, and this is very famous, and most of you mentioned this risk, is uh, it's, it's a very famous in financial institution, and it's broken down into three main risks. First is called market risk, which is the fluctuation of the prices and interest rate that could impact an organization negatively. Second, credit risk is the risk that the counterparty might not uh, uh, make the obligation as desired, and this was the risk uh, responsible for the financial crisis in 2008. Then we have the liquidity risk that was mentioned by Nico and other guys as well, which is the risk that the company might not raise enough fund to meet its obligations from either a liability outside, projects requirement, and growth. And then fifth risk is the operational risk. This is the risk, this is the most dangerous risk that can sense a lot of organization outside of business. And this is the risk that people, process, and system will fail, or an external event will cause a negative impact on the organization to perform. The final one is the compliance risk, which is the risk that the company might violate laws and regulations. There are other types and different kinds of risks. And one of the most famous one I was expected to hear it from you guys is the reputational risk, which is the risk that can affect the company's brand and reputation negatively. However, this is not a major risk. The reason is that uh, reputation risk happens because one of these five major risks already happened. So when there is a severe breach of the laws and regulation, then the, uh, the reputation risk comes in the picture. Okay. Uh, can I add something? Uh, Please go ahead. Uh, this is Salih Ahmed Islam from Istanbul. Uh, there, there is another one uh, which we are dealing with in the private sector now. Uh, it's, it can be included to compliance risk, but uh, it's a major one, third party risks for the vendors. Uh, we are uh, strictly combined with the uh, regulations uh, which are stated from uh, GDPR, SAPAD 2, and stuff like that. And uh, third party risks, especially in the bribery uh, perspective, it's a huge one. And it's a, uh, it's a risk uh, uh, goes up to uh, the owners and shareholders of the company. That's, okay, uh, I want to add. Yes, yes, very good. Uh, the bribery risk and the GDPR or the privacy co and compliance uh, privacy risk lies under the compliance risk, while the third party uh, lies under the operational risk. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Man, hi. You want to add something? Yes. Uh, this Please is my go ahead. Point. Um. There is one uh, risk that I want to also emphasize on, Please. which is political risk. Okay. Um, this, this word has been uh, a safety net for some countries, and on the other side, it has been uh, an annoying risk for many other countries, especially when we talk about uh, uh, fluctuation in the political situation of any country, which is affecting the economy, which is affecting sometimes the strategy of a business or the business line. If, if you go to, to those five risks, strategic business, financial, or whatever, sometimes the political risk is the main problem affecting your strategy. Because when you built your, start, your strategy, it was built on a specific political situation. And when you build your business plans, your financial targets, all of that might change because of the fluctuation of the political situation of any country. Thank you.
Hi, thank you so much for your suggestion about the political risk. This is 100% true. However, the political risk, when it happens, it will immediately affect one of the major five risks. Yes, I agree with you. It's very important risk to have. Okay, so before moving to the next slide, uh, I'd like you guys to tell me what could be the role of an enterprise risk manager or a chief risk officer in an organization? What is he doing? Can somebody tell me on like high guidelines? I think Ahmad Elbaz has his hand up. Ahmad, do you want to go? Ahmad Elbaz? Yeah, I had my Please hand up, uh, uh, but it wasn't for this question. I actually uh, have another one, but I can wait until the end. So I don't disturb your... No problem. It will be my pleasure, Ahmad. Yeah, thanks. So, no problem. So can somebody please tell me what is a risk, a chief risk officer or an enterprise risk management professional doing in an organization? What's his main roles and responsibilities? Hello, Sorry, gentlemen. How is the risk management process, uh, processes? Okay, good point. Making sure, making sure that the company is um, hmm. is safe from the threats facing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, there is uh, this um, term uh, project strategic fit. So the company is picking the suitable project or the projects for um, itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you uh, so much, Ahmed. Mr. Ahmed. You are welcome. Who's next? I, I have an input, Ahmed, if you don't mind. His role Please. is to align the strategy based on the uh, situation uh, resolved, be it uh, political, be it operational requirement, be it financial risk. Uh, he should be very situational in his planning, just like the pandemic proved. Uh, as an example, uh, in your previous slide, I would just like to add, we didn't mention brand damage. Brand damage affects... Uh, affects the corporation or the organization a lot. So True. effective managing of risk, effective managing of risk will actually help you market your business, obtain more tenders and uh, obviously suppliers and businesses. So B2B, B2B, B2B or C2C, yeah? And okay. obviously his role is to align the strategy with the situation. Very good. Uh, Mr. Mann? Yeah, I, I believe, um, can you hear me? I'm, and I'm talking from my own experience. I believe the main role of the risk management in any company is to really focus on the culture. Very good point. Very good point. The, the, the managers, the business people know risks more than we do. And they True. know the controls more than we do. True. But need targets, performance, budgets, drag them from what they're supposed to be doing. That's why the top management, of risk management in any organization should focus a lot on making or changing or accommodating a proper risk management culture to help those guys get their targets in the safest way possible. Mr. Mann, this is an excellent answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, let me tell you what is the role of an enterprise risk management or a chief risk of somebody would like to add answer? Yeah, I, I had, I just wanted to support actually this last, uh, um, yes. this last comment. Um, I think indeed all these technical definitions they, they don't help. You know, uh, I think indeed the the chief risk officer, however you call him, he is a he needs to be a good listener. He needs sure. to understand the context in which he's operating. He needs to be a translator. You know, between management, between functions, shareholders, etc. Um, and he's driving change as well. You know, but 
in order to drive change, you, you need to do that in, 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 in the right way. You know, you can't be preaching. You need to find your right angles. And I think um, one of these important angles is indeed the risk culture. You know? and, and you need to drive this um, with your credibility and with your communication skills, you know, throughout the organization. You know? So I see that very qualitatively, actually. So I, I like this last comment quite a lot. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Simon. So let me tell you guys the main role of an enterprise risk manager in an organization. So the first one is to develop an appropriate risk management framework, overlooking, uh, uh, overlooking the risk appetite strategy of a, and goals within an organization, embodying the risk into the organizational culture, as Mr. Mann and Mr. Simon emphasized, and finally becoming a strategic partner within an organization. I'm sorry, gentlemen, sorry. So the first, uh, I'm gonna be talking about each one of these very briefly. The first one is having an, um, an effective or appropriate risk management framework. And this happens through the very normal process that we all know about, which is identification of risk, risk measurement, and mitigation plans. The identification of risk, it starts by identifying, as I said before, corporate objectives and regulatory requirements. Then we determine what are the events that could create uncertainties in achieving corporate objectives or which can impact our ability to comply with the regulatory requirements. These can be done through different techniques such as interviews, workshops, uh, questionnaires, documents, review, and researches. Uh, then the second point comes about talking about the measurement and assessment of risk, which is an impact of the likelihood and the impact. And this usually, it comes from our knowledge of the market, best estimates placed by us, and from similar cases happening in the market or historical experience. The mitigation, it is a process where we place a number of efficient and effective control in order to mitigate the risk from happening. And for mitigation, we need to define the types of threats or opportunity that the organization is facing. In case of a threat, the organization can have four main routes towards it. Either terminate the threat by closing a project or transfer the threat by having an insurance tolerate, accept it, and finally treat it by reducing the level of the threat. And an opportunity we have to open up for the new opportunity coming. Second, own part of it, like creating a joint venture agreement with somebody. Third one is obligated. It's the only option available for us. And finally, to optimize, which means to put all the necessary controls in order to achieve such an objective. Then the next slide, we're going to be talking about risk appetite. Does anyone know what's risk appetite? Yeah, hi, this is uh, Ram here. Ram. Uh, appetite is, uh, risk appetite is uh, basically the level of tolerance of an organization in terms of uh, uh, the nature and the value of risks that they can operate with or uh, identify with and uh, what is some, something which actually raises the red flag for them and something which they cannot tolerate. So that level okay. is called the appetite. Okay, very good. Ahmad, please. I was just uh, another, I, another, quite another definition of the risk appetite is from my understanding the parameters, the, um, criteria according to which a company or an enterprise decided to take a project or to take a risk on and how to handle this project or this risk in a specific um, in a suitable way okay anyone would like to add more yeah risk appetite is the level of risk uh, that any organization is prepared to accept very good to achieve, to achieve its objectives Excellent answer. I don't know, you're, you're reading my mind, maybe. Okay, let me give you the right answer for this. Risk appetite represents the type and aggregate level of risk an organization is willing to accept to achieve its strategic objective. 
it falls within the broader category of risk capacity. The risk capacity is the maximum risk an organization can tolerate. So risk appetite is part of the risk capacity. High risk appetite means that higher willingness from the management to accept a risk. Risk appetite consists of three main parts. The first is a risk appetite statement, which is a broader approved policy that describes uh, the type of the risk that an organization is willing to accept. It is aligned with the business strategy and it reflects the organizational structure and culture. Risk metrics is a measurement parameter in determining the level of risk. Measurement parameter could be like, for example, return on equity. It could be number of system disconnection and percentage of delinquent receivables. The third and last part is risk tolerance. Risk tolerance is a quantitative threshold or a limit upon which we can decide whether the risk is high or low. Like for example, we can say tolerance is 5% of return on equity. So in totality, what do, how does a risk appetite look like? We can say, for example, our credit policy to customer are based on our strong knowledge of our customer and corporate principles. This is the risk appetite statement. Then the metrics will be account receivable frequencies and the tolerance we can say 5% of total account receivable. A lot of business unit and risk professionals should be monitoring the risk tolerance on a regular basis and should be divided into three main categories. The first one is a low risk appetite level. Okay, this is where the risk level is still low and we might suggest to increase the risk level bit to increase the return. Medium risk appetite level, which is not too high, but it needs to be monitored closely to avoid it from going to a higher risk appetite. High risk appetite, it is where the risk have reached to an alarming level that requires the management and board intervention in order to reduce the risk. The second, point, the second slide, I'm gonna be talking about embodying the organizational culture. And can somebody tell me how we can embed the risk into the organizational culture? Hello? Gentlemen, Mr. Man al Bustami. Uh, I did not understand the question. Can you repeat it again? Um, okay, Mr. Man, you emphasize that one of the most important tasks of an enterprise risk manager is to ensure that he embed the risk in the organizational culture. Yes. How can we do this? Okay. <clears throat> again, um, I will also tell you from my own experience in one of the companies. Okay, please. Uh, and I appreciate if you give me enough time. <laughs> okay. Simply, if you, if you are hired as a risk manager in a company, you are new to the company. <laughs> okay. Start talking. Start listening as much as you can. Okay. Then, Take things slowly, give trainings. Um, sometimes, yes. sometimes it is better to have group trainings. Uh, okay. and during the group trainings, focus on situations that this company might have happened, might, might have had in the past. Like for example, we work in, in brokerage business, in equity stock market, okay? So when I used to do uh, group trainings, I used to put situations where clients' complaints might come, buying without orders, you know, real life situations. Okay. Interact and say what is right and what is wrong. Because people tend to, to forget history, but if, if you tell them, do this and do that, they will not listen. If you make them say it, then when you put a policy, they will implement it because they know what is right and wrong. And the okay. other thing that I implemented is for each and every new employee as part of the joining process, regardless of the position and regardless of the seniority level, 
has to have a proper risk management training and full compliance training on the code of conduct, whistleblowing policy, you know, regulators, important regulations and proper risk management uh, training. And this really affected the entire culture significantly over like two or three years maximum. Okay. Very good answer, Mr. Mann. Thank you so much. Mr. Simon, you want to add something? One second. Um, okay. One, one second. I was a bit distracted, but I, I had a good point, um, but I now Please. need to remember what, what I wanted to say. Um, I think indeed there was one very important element from this previous um, uh, contribution. Um, I think you need to always drive it through practical angles you know it, it doesn't help to just tell people to do certain things culture you need to build and nurture not to just demand to have it you know? so uh, you need to create it by a constant effort and it needs to include not only what you can do from the risk side i, need, I think you need to have worked very closely with your senior, ma senior management as well uh, okay. to make sure that the organization understands that there's a certain way of how you go about things in your company. Uh, and this includes things like culture, risk culture, um, and that's kind of your safety net that you have. Uh, and you need to build it very holistically and, and leading by example as well. Okay, very good answer. I think Last Ahmed one. El Baz has his hand up. Please, Ahmed. Um, <clears throat> thank you for giving me this chance, I think. Your question was how to um, implement or embed risk enterprise risk management in the, in the culture of a company or an organization. Correct. Yeah, and uh, I think you need first of all to create such a safe place for the, and, uh, and to um, achieve some openness. So you get your employers to share their fears and the risks they have in their Very project. Good point. And to, handle them in a very transparent um, way. So you take this risk management and you convert it to, and you show them how does this, this risk management affect the resource management of the company and how can you, and how are you going to um, divide the resources uh, between projects? And okay. very important, very important also is to present yourself as a role model because you know, uh, um, workers don't do what the manager say, the workers do what the, man the manager does. And a very big risk when you are talking about risk management is underestimating risks. So you need to show them that you go according to the book and you follow the steps so they can... Um, okay, let me give you guys how we can enhance the risk culture within an organization. Okay, there are five major way of improving. First, a storm from the top. Management has to support and enhance the risk management. Second, as Mr. Mann mentioned, we have to hold workshops and training to train employees about risk management. Then we have to conduct an annual survey to know the level of knowledge of risk management within an organization. And then we establish a higher robust procedure, a hiring procedure, in order to ensure that we bring the right people to the organization. We then bring somebody who has a very high risk appetite to the organization while the organization has a low risk appetite. And lastly, the point which was mentioned by Mr. Ahmed al Bas is that to set a friendly communication line with management to ensure proper escalation and transparency of issues. Okay. The, the, the last task of an, uh, of an enterprise risk manager is to become a strategic partner within a business. So every kind of decision he is involved in. What will be the characters of the business when the enterprise risk management reaches to such a maturity level? First, the risk will be integrated into the decision decisions of the C-suite. There is a measured and noticed improvement in achieving the organizational objectives. There is a dialogue between the board members that involves the risk, and risk professional may suggest to increase the risk in certain situations to achieve a higher risk adjusted risk. The main product of an enterprise risk management is a dashboard. Okay, 
The dashboard has three main characteristics. First, it needs to be forward looking. So it discuss what will happen in the future and avoid the discussing what already happened. Second, it needs to have an integrated approach. So it looks to the organization in totality and not department by department or section by section. And finally, it needs to be concise. I don't believe in the current time that employee, uh, that top management or board of directors are looking to set on pile of papers and start reading to make a decision. The main section of an informative risk management dashboard is, is an executive summary, which stresses on the main points of discussion, new risks and events that has come up that the organization is facing, and a follow up on prior risk and events that, uh, that the organization faced in the previous reporting period and the status of their mitigation plans, emerging and trending risks, which are risks that might come to the market and impact the organization, risk assessment and metrics, which is a section includes a commentary from different departments about whether the risk has increased above the risk appetite and the level of the key risk performance indicators. The last thing that can be included is a roadmap which shows the progress of an enterprise risk management with an organization. The last slide we will be talking about uh, risk management is we will be talking about an enterprise risk management maturity. And the very famous question, which is, why do we need to have an enterprise risk management in our organization? Or why do we need to have a chief risk officer? Every department can take care of its own risk. But so why do we need to have a chief risk officer? Can somebody give me a quick answer for this? Or shall I repeat the question again? Hello? Ahmed, repeat the question. Sorry, repeat the question. The question is, why do we need to have an enterprise risk management function in an organization while each department can take care of its own risk? Uh, because of independence. Very good point. Very, very good point. It's okay. basically everyone will see the risk coming and will not do anything about it because they want to reach their target or their uh, goal. Okay. Very good. And some people are not educated enough and living uh, basically on hope that things will be okay. But when the risk materialize and become a danger, uh, they start trying to solve the problem. Very good point, Mr. Mann. Thank Anyone you. else? Miko, you want to say something? Yeah. Now an example from area called data security. And there was a disaster called uh, solar winds at the end of last year. And the pro one big problem in that company was that they, they had difficulties filling those positions related to uh, risk management uh, people. And yeah, simply put. Okay. Anyone else would like to add an answer? Ahmed, I would like to add something, please. Please. Um, could you repeat uh, the question again? So I'm uh, fully aware of the question. The question is, why, do, why we do we need to have a centralized risk management while each department can take care of its own risk? All right. I mean, having a centralized risk department or having each manager to manage their own risk, I would like to stress and emphasize on managers uh, managing their own risk before getting into a centralized risk management, because I would like to start from bottom up, because centralized, you will be enforcing a risk management on the line managers. And instead of uh, 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 line managers identifying their own risks first, that may uh, hinder the achievement of their goals and objectives, which at the end of the day will uh, go into uh, the uh, achieving the goals and objectives of the organization itself. 
right? So okay. we have a good example of the pandemic, all right? If in, in the last year, companies were not actually uh, prepared. This is an unusual risk and uh, nobody expected it. So we have a, we, we, we try to have risk management, whether at that central level or at management level, expect no. No. mechanism to make those shifts in order to uh, the organization, again, achieve its goals and objectives. So that's the simple, uh, um, I think, a simple uh, explanation why we should have risk management at central level or and or at the line management level. Thank okay, you. thank you so much. Mr. Ahmed al -Baz, I'm sorry, uh, I don't have much time for the session, so I need to give the answer for this, okay? Uh, okay, so the answer lies in a comparison between the traditional risk management approach and the enterprise risk management approach. In the traditional risk management approach, risk is managed in silos. So each department managing its own risk. While in the traditional risk enterprise risk management approach, it is managed in an integrated form. So the enterprise risk professional looks to the entire risks facing the organization and not department by department. Second, traditional risk management, which or department-wise risk management, it is more a cost and reactive approach. While enterprise risk management is a value-driven and proactive approach. And price risk a tradition risk management may have their own risk assessment, risk, risk call, uh, language, while enterprise risk management is having a unified language and there is a unified enterprise risk appetite across the organization. Enterprise risk management has a framework where the chief risk officer is accountable for, and this is completely missing in the tra uh, traditional risk management approach. Finally, the most important is that enterprise risk management provides more transparency and more independence because of the reporting line than the traditional approach. Now, we have just like left with five minutes. I'll tell you guys some of the stories that happened in the past about enterprise risk management. And I'm going to be very quick about this. The first one is Société Générale. Definitely Société Générale is a very well-known international French bank that suffered a loss of nearly about 5 billion euros. And this loss came as a shocking to management and everyone in the financial industry. Uh, they start looking after this and they find a trader who committed this um, deals uh, it was, he was first accused of being a rogue trader. Then later on, the investigation revealed that he is a normal person having a normal car, having a normal house, and even no car. But with further investigations, they discovered that there was around 74 risk alerts that passed the bank systems. And his supervisor even didn't mention them. This... His main function of the trade, the main function of the trader was to trade in highly volatile instrument. And the trader discovered that he can perform daily trades to cover up his trading loss. Or in another way, he can carry trade, illegal trade, to cover up his, tra his trading losses. Uh, when the, uh, when <clears throat> the trader was faced by the incident by his supervisor, uh, his, he agreed with his supervisor to overlook such alerts. However, after a period of time, alerts start building up and the bank couldn't turn a blind, blind eye on this, especially after one of the correspondent banks said in the statement that they, not, that they are not aware of certain trades appearing in the statement. At this point, the bank started to make a critical risk ma crisis management procedures. The bank stopped all the trading activities, investigated to identify who the trader was involved with, studied the market and decided it's time to close up all the deals and not wait for a miracles. 
performed a loss calculation and liquidity calculation and decided to borrow extensively from J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley to avoid bankruptcy, terminated the trader, and he was sent to court, or to court and ordered to jail, implemented an effective risk management culture. As the investigation goes, it was uncovered that this trade was not the only trader who performed this, but there were other traders as well performing this for profit margins. In a nutshell, it seems it was not the case that the bank has a weak risk management system. It was the greed for more profit on the account of unmanaged risk. Another story from a military camp a young officer waited nervously outside the commanding officer, and a voice came loudly say, enter. The young officer went inside, and the commanding officer handed him an envelope with his next assignment. The young officer looked surprised, and he said, sir, I'm, so he I'm here today to be disciplined for my recent incident. The commanding officer replied back to him, saying, Smith, you have damaged a valuable airplane today. However, because of your training, you managed to save yourself and me to save the plane. So go back home, think about it, and come tomorrow for your next assignment. Years later, the young officer became a commanding officer. And he always remembered this story and said that the fact that taking unmanaged risk, the fact that taking a managed risk within the boundaries goes unpunished, while if you step outside of those boundaries, you will be punished and the consequence will be severe. The third case is for a company called Equifax, and this is an interesting. It's an accredited scoring company in the United States, where the data of around 150 million customers was exposed due to intrusion to the server. This was due to a vulnerability in the system that was supposed to be resolved within 48 hours from discovery. However, it was resolved after two months. The management discovered that this incident happened in May 2017. However, it was discovered in July 2017. And the management didn't take any action till September 2017 in an attempt to conceal the incident. But this created more criticism for the company and the chief information officer and the security officer, chief security officer were retired immediately. What added insult to this is that the same word admin was the login and password access to thousands of customers account. The last case, which is a very, very famous case, it's about Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. And Facebook data from over than 80 million people were improperly shared with the political consultancy Cambridge Analytica and allegedly used to manipulate public opinion for two important political decisions, which are the US election and the pre-exit. The revelation triggered the European Parliament testimony from the Facebook CEO, and it underlined the issue of social media regulation and highlighted a very important point mentioned today by one of the gentlemen, which is extending the information security to the third party service provider. Facebook stock market fell down sharply then rebounded back. It also came a heavy criticism to the Facebook when it became apparent that it had known for a year that Cambridge Analytica had collected data from over than 50 million users and Facebook simply relied on the self-certification from Cambridge and Analytica that they have deleted the information, while in fact they did not. Cambridge Analytica filed for bankruptcy in May 2018, a week after the scandal. And this is the end of the four interesting story today and end of my session with you gentlemen. I really enjoyed your interaction and I enjoyed giving this webinar. Uh, gentlemen, do you have any question? Hello? Thank you. No, thank you. From my, thank thank you. Welcome. There Thanks, are welcome. ladies, there are ladies too, not only gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Most welcome. 
Ahmed, um, hopefully, hopefully that you can hear me on your side. Yes. I just want to check with you. Are you going to share the presentation um, after this session? Uh, I can, uh, uh, yes, of course, we can share the presentation. Okay. Will there be any future webinar? Um, um, I'm, I'm quite uh, interested. Yes, we in can future. do future webinars as well. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and thank you, Ahmad, for giving such an interesting presentation. Uh, if you can welcome. all stick around for one more minute, and we can all click a picture, and if you can, uh, on your videos. Ahmad, can you unshare your screen? Thank you. So if everyone can uh, come on video quickly, and we can take a quick group picture. Nika, while we wait for everyone to connect and um, to switch on their videos, just regarding Lesehu's question, if you're interested in any future webinars um, of Ahmed, you can just follow Ahmed Kalal on LinkedIn um, and all of the future events and webinars will be on his profile. So, um, so if you want to, to be sure you don't miss anything, just follow him on LinkedIn. Great, thank you. And I see a lot of videos coming on. So let's quickly count down and say risk at the end and take a nice picture. So three, two, one, risk. Risk. Great, thank you so much everybody for joining. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, bye. Bye everyone.